Hi, welcome back to the Gap Search Channel. I'm going to talk today about some new technology that's becoming a lot more affordable than what it used to be. It's a thermal imaging. This is basically a thermography camera, so like a thermal camera in the common language. And uh, it's uh, by uh, HIK Micro. This is the B10S model we're going to talk about today and how it's going to help you diagnose some problems, see how your equipment is running, how hot some of the parts are running, or even diagnose some of the parts that could be shorting. If you have something malfunctioning, it's going to help you find the areas that are probably problematic. You can also use it for other things like even uh, your, say, you can check your building if it has any air leaks. Uh, or like windows are leaking or doors are leaking or even check your ceiling to see where is a ducting is going sometimes or in the walls where the ducting is going some you can also spot some uh, water leaks quite often because water is always cooler than uh, sometimes other areas and uh, tends to show as cooler areas. Uh, so this is a multifunctional device that can do a lot of things. You can also even use it to spot outside in the dark to see if someone hiding in the bushes or if you have any uh, critters uh, crawling around in certain areas in the dark. This will basically show them right off even as they're hiding behind uh, other objects. It's basically it's sensing the heat rather than the picture or the light. Here's an example, for example, here we have a Marantz CD95 CD player. It's got uh, two dual TDA 15418 chips. These have the uh, S1, the crown version. So this is a very high-end uh, CD player. So let's see if these are running to optimal temperature and uh, how would that go with a thermal imager. So we're going to bring in here the HIK Micro uh, B10S uh, we're going to put it on the uh, area and as you can see uh, it's telling us that the maximum temperature is 50 degrees Celsius and that's pointing in the red dot here on uh, it keeps bouncing between one or the other which is good actually they're running around the same temperature uh, around 51 degrees Celsius. Uh, the center temperature is 35, so that's where the yellow is, and the cold area is about 19. So, so the blue is basically cold, and the red is the hot, and the yellow. This is a part that I like the best. You can do this in a different uh, uh, pattern if you like. So, for example, you can do it in black and white. You can do it in a different, uh, and you can even pick your own colors if you like. That's all into uh, the settings. So one I like the most is the rainbow setting. I find it a little bit uh, more understandable, and, but you can, like I said, pick your own colors. The main thing here, we're trying to find out if there's any components that are running super hot. Uh, we definitely know that those chips run around that kind of temperature, so we know that they're running perfectly fine. Now if I step back a little bit away, and uh, we start to look around, we're going to see there's some hotter parts. You can see like there's one part right here and this one is running at 76 degrees Celsius. And uh, so that's, I mean, it's still within the norm, but just it's good to know that there are some parts running a little bit hotter than areas. As long as you're under 85 degrees, usually you're fine. Most components can handle up to 85 degrees and some are designed to run hot. So that's kind of normal. Uh, that's uh, it's, it's not a bad thing. Now if we step a little bit back you're going to see uh, the disk spinning. So this is a live image as you can see. Uh, it's very uh, very fast refresh rate and uh, if we look here the uh, hottest area seems to be uh, just around somewhere here but let's just focus on the transformer part and see, so the transformer, you can see the red dot shifted to the transformer because that is the hottest part here. And it's running about 31 degrees Celsius, that's fairly normal. But as you can see, if I put my hand here, you can see that my hand became the hottest part. So basically, we know that the transformer at 31 uh, degrees uh, is running cooler than your hand. So if you put your hand on it, basically you're going to feel like it's actually cooler. So it's not that hot at all. 
and uh, the CD spinner should not be getting hot and that's normal but you'll be surprised sometimes if things are uh, touching and uh, there's friction you will see a little bit of heat around the circle here and that's not good it means you're getting uh, basically uh, heat uh, and things are actually rubbing around and that's normal that's not normal you would actually even hear it sometimes let's say you don't like it in celsius you want it to be in fahrenheit you can actually change the settings it's pretty simple you just press the power button quickly and you have a whole different settings you can adjust here uh, this thing is so uh, like you can really adjust it as a to your liking there's so many things you can set up here uh, we're going to go into keep scrolling down and we're going to go into the display settings because that's where we can change the celsius to fahrenheit we're going to scroll down and you will see at the bottom for example here there is a unit right here and if you press quickly the power it's going to change to fahrenheit you can also use kelvin if you like and like I said, Celsius, let's try uh, Fahrenheit for a quick second. You can then go back and go back to where we were. And you can see it's instantly now changed to Fahrenheit. So now we have uh, the chips are running at 139 uh, degrees Fahrenheit instead. So, so like I said, there's so many other settings you, you can do in here. Uh, so you get albums is where you like to put your pictures emissibility you could adjust because sometimes you could get errors by how the uh, heat is transferring the distance that you usually work at for example for example in this case we are really close so we might want to go in and and check and and tone it down to 0 0.1 meters right and see if our if things have changed we're at 134 so there's some slight variation in in the temperature because you kind of want to so if you're always using it really close you would set it too close and if you're using it far you would set it uh, much further i'm gonna put it i'm just gonna leave it right now at, uh, at that setting basically just gonna put it roughly about 0 0.3 kind of where we uh, mostly myself use it and uh, I'll say back and here we go so it might change the temperature readings a tiny bit uh, because um, you have to re uh, account for all these things but you don't have to be obsessed like if you're not fussy you don't need like a fraction of a, size, of a degree you don't worry about it too much it's still gonna read properly it's just if you want like that super accuracy then you would want it uh, set up to the exact uh, or close enough distance so the way the settings work is to enter the setting you just press the power button briefly and you get the settings in there and uh, now you can actually change things uh, you can scroll down so for example if we're going to change to fahrenheit you're going to go into the display settings and press, in, press the power button which is like an enter button basically and you scroll down here and you're going to see at the very bottom that there is a unit and you can change that from Fahrenheit to Kelvin even if you like to or to Celsius or and when you're done you just press return button and that brings you back to the main screen so you can see now we changed to Celsius there's so many settings you can do I'll uh, just press the uh, enter again and you can go to albums is where you can put different pictures this can store actually over 30,000 pictures inside it and uh, you can have them organized in there Emissibility is basically try to in, in thermal imaging is how things can reflect and how things can can uh, can do and so there's different things some of them I'm not familiar with to be honest with you uh, the distance is critical in a way uh, like say if you're always using it for electronics you're probably going to be at a short distance I have it here at set at 0 0.3 uh, meters we go into display settings uh, you can see you can define which one you want hot which one you're cold and center you can even have your own user defined spots you can have multiple spots uh, the pilot for example if we go into that it's kind of cool it gives you like i said you can decide which way you want it to be set i like the rainbow setting and that seems to be uh, my preferred one 
and I'm back into the alarm here. Or we can turn it on and we can go down and say I want my temperature warning well to be uh, for example 100 and, yeah. and so we set it for 180 we're gonna say okay and it should stop beeping now because there's nothing running above that temperature right we're close here with that little transistor at 164 you could see where the little center point is that's basically where your hottest part so make sure if you're checking something like this that you don't assume that your chips are running at this temperature because it's centering here, that there's a very hot one here. Just make sure you take that out of the picture and now you're gonna get your center uh, pen actually is gonna move to, to those. Uh, it's actually detecting something on the other side. Yeah. There we go. So now as we moved it around, it's gonna basically go back and revert to the chips and telling us that these guys are at 122. So this is our hottest point, this is the center, and this is the coldest point, and you get all your readings. From time to time it will do a little calibrating, that's normal, that's part of the way the system works. Checking electronics is not the only thing here. You can also check your uh, building if you have any uh, air leaks through doors and windows. For example, you can use uh, you can see here that uh, as we get closer on the bottom here, you can see that the door is leaking a bit of air on the bottom and from the seal is not that great. And that's the blue area and the rest is a little bit warmer because these are the building uh, warm walls, for example. You can even check the ceilings and see what's uh, happening there. And we can see here and you can see here, just in the corner, the little bit bluer area. That doesn't mean it's leaking, it's just a little bit cooler. But if you have a big leak, it's going to show a big area of blue there. And that's why. Now, if you notice, the windows are cold, so they are looking blue, because that's actually their cooler temperature. And uh, it just gives you an idea. You can even check your flooring to see where the vents are. And here you can see that there's definitely a vent there and it's crawling, there's a lot of heat coming out of it. Uh, but you can also check your floors to see if there's uh, where the sometimes the ducting is. I'm not going to go through all that because that's not my area of expertise, but uh, I'll just uh, thought I'll mention all that because electronics is not just the only thing you can use this thing for. You can see uh, my cat actually just coming from the outdoors just came in you can see is the face of the cat is actually warm the nose is warm and stuff but the rest of it is cold and after a little while that she was indoors and you can see now that she's getting a little war warmer all around and, uh, and you can see a little bit uh, better i hope you like this video i learned something about thermal imaging and how you can use it uh, to your benefit i'm going to put a link in the corner up here uh, a video about my latest DAC, the gapster td1 and in this corner i'm going to put another uh, list of uh, music uh, tracks that you can listen to to help you diagnose your system and improve it as well there'll be a little link in the middle here a little speaker if you'd like to subscribe to the channel and i hope to see you in another video. Take care.